Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King, and we're coming to you from the locker room once again here at Dugan Stadium on the campus of Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. We're going to be talking some Islanders soccer with head coach Shannon Caldwell and Islanders volleyball with head coach Tony Greystone. We're also going to feature uh, two special athletes for the Islanders who had an opportunity to go overseas. That's coming up a bit later. Right now, we'll talk some Islanders soccer, though, with head coach Shannon Caldwell. Coach, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you as well. First off, congratulations uh, the, for the conference win this past Friday here at Dugan Stadium against Central Arkansas. It was the first conference win at home, which was special. And, well, let me ask you this. What were the key components in getting that win, getting a 2-0 shutout? Uh, it was a great result. Um, way to open the, our, our home conference schedule. Um, you know, I, I think the girls just, they, they played well together. Uh, we talked about kind of emphasizing, you know, capitalizing on our scoring chances um, and really working together and, and doing the little things. And if we did those, you know, the, the result would take care of itself. Oh, there's no doubt. First off, uh, your defender, Jessica Berdan, uh, saw her first action at Dugan Stadium this season. Tell me about Jessica, and we've talked about her before, but she's a junior this year. Talk to me about her role on the field as a player, but also her leadership. Uh, Jess is great. Um, you know, she, she does a lot. Of, it's tough being, uh, being one of the leaders of a, of a young squad, um, and she does a really good job of just, you know, being there, relaying all the messages, doing all the little things uh, off the field. Um, and on the field, she just gives us a, a, a sense of uh, calming uh, nature kind of back there in the, in the back. Um, you know, our defenders have done great all season, no matter who's been in or, or where we've asked them to play. Um, but it is nice to, to have Jess's leadership back on the field, uh, anchored there with, with um, J.C. Love. A lot of times in basketball, I'll say like a point guard will be the coach on the court. Is Jessica Berdan one of those players that would you consider the coach on the field? You know, she she does a great job back there along with Delaney and, and Biba and, you know, everybody else has been in the back line. And um, actually, you know, right now we're just trying to get the continuity back together as, uh, you know, Biba and JC had been playing in the middle together for a while. So having Jess back there has been, an, uh, you know, it's it's a great addition, um, you know, whether she's in or Mariah, but uh, Jess and JC are just getting used to each other. So it, it's, you know, a positive thing looking forward uh, as the season progresses to see the two of them um you know, gel even more together. The game against Central Arkansas it was, it was a pretty physical contest. I, I think it got to that point. How do you keep your team focused on the task at hand and not on maybe retaliation in a game like that? You know, we, we talk to them a lot about just keeping their, keeping their heads and walking away. Um, you know, it's always the second foul that gets called. So, you know, trying to emphasize that, you know, just let the, let, let us as a coaching staff handle, handle the referees and, and, and deal with that and they just need to stay plugged into what's going on and uh, you know that, that's, a, that's a mentality that they have to you know we're doing a, doing well with but I think we can still do a little bit better but as the season goes on we'll look we'll, we'll keep going keep growing no doubt now we can't talk about the Central Arkansas game without talking about the rain the rain <laughs> first you had an uh, you have another big delay due to lightning uh, in the area um, if that every time that happens, it just really just crushes the momentum or whatever thing is going on at that point. This time it happened right in the right near the end of the first half. Is it a welcome rest period or is it really disrupt flow? Uh, well, we had about eight minutes uh, and some change left to go in the first half uh, when that that lightning delay came. So um, it, it was tough in the sense of of knowing that we had to come back out, warm up again. Um, you know, they were really excited, and, and that's kind of where you just, you, you want them to have that energy, but they've got to be focused, and, um, you know, we did we did well to come out with that, and then, uh, you know, it's another break again, another 15-minute break, so, uh, with halftime, and, uh, you know, it's tough to defend a two-goal lead, because, you know, the momentum can change so easily if you give one up, um, so it was our first time being out front with the, with the, with the lead, and, uh, you know, we gave up a lot of uh, chances in the second half, and I think just uh, some nervous energy, but uh, the, the kids rallied around each other to keep the shutout. Coach, the one thing about the rain is it brings its own unique challenges itself. Uh, other than getting similar weather, is there any other way to simulate that in practice? I, I don't think so. You know, each game is unique in its own in its own regard, and um, we had a rain delay last year at Abilene Christian that uh, you know we had, had the momentum. Um, starting to, to change things around and the, they had the, the, the rain break. So, um, again, that was one of the ones where we were really excited and, and energized and knew we wanted to get the game finished. And uh, we, we 
we just kind of fell asleep on defense for a second um, because we were so eager to score. So I think, you know, all those, all those experiences just kind of help us as this season goes on that we've, we've faced opportunities like this before, challenges like this before. Who's it toughest on? I'm, I'm, I keep thinking the goalkeeper. I don't know. I think, you know, Delaney's, Delaney's a strong, strong player. So. And by the way, speaking of Delaney, fourth shot out of the year. Yeah, she's, she's playing really well and got some help from, from the team last night, or, or Friday night with, um, the, the big stop, uh, you know, toward the end of the game on the, their indirect free kick inside the box and, so that was a strange play you, in itself. <laughs> everybody I spoke to said that, Willow, you've never really seen that before. It was maybe eight feet from the goal line uh, where they got an indirect kick. The, yeah, it was just outside the penalty, uh, the penalty spot. You know, they called Audrey Cool for a pass back, which a uh, questionable call, but, you know, it happened and we had to deal with it and, you know, we defended it well. Uh, I think JC Love actually saved it off the side of her face. So. Um, Good for Jason. She scores her first career goal and then comes up with a huge stop at the end of the game. So I don't know which one you were proud of at that uh, point. You exactly. know, she she had. There's a great uh, Twitter gif of her uh, <laughs> celebration. So it's a, the excitement uh, for her was was huge and it was nice to see. Well, this week uh, there was you know this past week was a one game weekend. This week is a one game weekend. You have a little bit of time in between. Uh, are they welcomed this type of gap at this time of year, especially when you're dealing with bumps and bruises? You know, it's nice to, that we'll get some players back. Um, the last few that, that were injured uh, are starting to come back again. Um, it, it's, you know, it can kind of go either way. It, you know, we, we end the season with, um, you know, I think three back-to-back, -back, you know, two-game weekends. So, um, you know, that's tough, but we'll take the break while we can. You know, exams are starting to come up. So, it could be, you know, we just, we'll just go with it and, and, uh, we focus one game at a time as it is. So, um, you know, we get our, our practices in on Sunday and kind of simulate a, a Sunday game. Well, let me, well, that's true. Well, let me ask you about your, your weekend though. Lake Charles, Louisiana is where you're heading. You're heading back to McNeese. Uh, we knocked them off last year in Southland play, as a matter of fact, our Southland Conference victory last year. Do you think the fact that we won last year will maybe ramp up the intensity of this game? I, you know, this year in conference, especially beginning a conference play, every team's in the hunt. Every team's got a chance to qualify. Um, and, and, you know, the scores have been kind of all over the place in conference. So, you know, anything can happen. And you got to stay, stay focused because every game is going to be intense um, right now. And, you know, I, I know it'll be in, in the kids' head. That was our first conference win last year, and it was exciting. But, you know, we went to overtime last year. So, um you know, McNeese had an interesting result this weekend, so um, you know I think it'll be an it'll be an interesting challenge, and I think the girls are ready to put two games back to back, um, and hopefully, you know, if we play well, that again the results will take care of themselves. Well, coach, it was an exciting weekend, and unfortunately, the rain drove off some of our fans, but you got the win despite the fact that we had uh, our stands were not nearly as full as they were when the game started. Yeah, the uh, the weather has not been kind to us uh, for our home games um, the last couple Fridays, but you know we still appreciate those that were out there and and cheering and yelling throughout the entire game, and uh, you know I think we you know the, the ones that stayed got to see a great game. They did at that the great victory. As the Islanders knocked off Central Arkansas, we're looking for back-to-back -back this weekend. Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. Shanna Caldwell joining us here in the locker room. When we return, we have a special feature on two Islanders basketball players that I would think you'll find quite interesting. Stay with us. More to come. Islanders Insider continues. The Southland Conference is 4,200 student-athletes from 13 member institutions competing in 17 NCAA Division I sports. We are Southland Strong. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we have a special feature brought to you by Teddy Medina, focusing on Ashanti Plummer and Bryce Duvier, two athletes from the Islanders who got a chance to go overseas this summer. We'll tell you more about it right now. This summer, Islanders basketball players Bryce Duvier and Ashanti Plummer traveled overseas as part of Athletes in Action, with Duvier traveling to China and Plummer to Germany and the Czech Republic. 
It was a very new experience for both student athletes. I was actually a little bit nervous about going over there with the language barrier and the cultural differences. Um, I knew that our mission was to go over there and spread the word of Jesus Christ and to know that I was going to one of the most atheist countries in the world, the Czech Republic, and also <clears throat> another country, Germany, which is not the most atheist, but also completely different culture was kind of scary, but I was really excited because I've never been out of the country before. Oh, it was great. Um, first of all, it was uh, great on you know sitting out last year and getting a chance to play some basketball games again. And second of all, it's just uh, great to go over to China and see some people that are less fortunate and try to help them out in different ways. The two use basketball as their platform to spread the message of athletes in action through the relationships that they established. Um, in China, it was mission-wise, it was pretty hard just because they're close, they're pretty closed off uh, Christian-wise. So um, we had to kind of watch out what we said and the things we, we did over there in terms of praying and witnessing and things like that. So that was, it was kind of hard to navigate with that, um, but yeah. Well, basketball is a universal game. It's something that in every country they play it. So using that platform to be able to, you know, connect with young ladies and tell them about um, Jesus Christ is really big because they want to listen to you. They look up to you and they want to hear what you have to say. So uh, it was really great being able to use, you know, God's gift of basketball to tell people about, you know, Jesus. While overseas, they both took advantage of being able to take in all the sights that the countries had to offer. We got to go to see the Great Wall, which was probably one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in my life. Uh, for fun, we, the group of guys we were with, we, we all just kind of clicked and got along really well. So we hung out in each other's hotel rooms, uh, chatted. We were playing the Slender Man Reaper game for a while. You know, we did some of that. Um, we just had a really good time talking with each other. We did some sightseeing and stuff in Mongolia and China. But uh, I think the biggest highlight was just hanging out with the group of guys and the coaches that were there. Um, when I was in Prague in the Czech Republic, I remember being on the Charles Bridge and there was a big statue of like Jesus Christ with like on top, it said like Hosanna and stuff like that. And I just felt like that was so beautiful and so in Prague in general, being on top of the, George, uh, the uh, Charles Bridge the beautiful different colors of the houses and the water. I will forever remember that in the huge castle. It was completely just stunning. For Islanders Insider, I'm Teddy Medina. We'll be right back. Whether you're on the road or at home, GoIslanders.com is your source for Texas A&M Corpus Christi Athletics. From live stats to live video to all the latest news, GoIslanders.com has everything to keep you up to date on all the latest on your favorite Islanders team. Check out Islanders schedules and statistics and learn more about the student athletes at the Island University. Get tickets, Islanders game day gear, and more by clicking your way to GoIslanders.com today. Go Islanders! Welcome back to Islanders Insider as we come to you from the locker room here on the campus of Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. Time to talk about Islanders Volleyball with the head coach, Tony Gracetown. Coach, how are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, since the last time you spoke, your team was seriously active. I I'm telling you, eight games in ten days. For you, you hosted the uh, Emerald Beach Islanders Classic. You played top 25 Texas A&M and then opened South and Conference play on the road for two games. Let's talk about the tournament for a moment. That was a challenge in itself. Anytime you have to play five games in three days. Um, what was your take on the tournament, winning three of your five? And maybe some of the other coaches' take on the tournament itself. Well, the tournament was really well run. Everybody had a great experience with it. Um, and as always, when, when we host, we, we put on a good show. And, and uh, so it was, it was really nice to be home after being on the road for three weeks and, and put on a first-class event like that. Um, you know, and as far as our overall play, I thought we did very well. And, and um, you know, the Houston match was the one um, that we'd like to get back. But at the same time, you know, that kid went for 37 kills on us. And there wasn't much we could do about it. You know, 6'4 girl who was just having a night, you know, and um, it happens. And, uh, you know, Boise State was as good as any team we've played all year. And so no no shame there. But, um, you know, 3-2, and two, and we were right there with Houston. And, and I feel like... I still feel like, you know, if we would have played them 10 times, we'd beat them eight times. And, you know, they just got us on one of those nights where they were digging every ball and the right kid was getting the swing. So just one of those things. 
a uh, good tournament. You saw performances throughout your team. A lot of different players contributing. As a matter of fact, you had two players, uh, the freshman Gilpin and uh, Haley Satterwhite, ended up making the all-tournament squad. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Brittany had a great week, and um, and and really over the last probably three weeks, she's been really solid. Her hitting percentage has gone up every week. She's a really low air girl. Um, that's one of the things we really liked about her. She just doesn't hit the ball out of bounds. Um, and, you know, her, she's a little small, but she gets up and offensively she can really put it away. So we're getting everything out of her that uh, we were expecting to. I know that wins are, plain and simple, the most satisfying. Mm-hmm. But, but a loss can be satisfying as well. I would think so. Uh, taking, for, for instance, the Texas A&M loss. Going up to College Station, playing a top 25 team. I think there were 21 in the country at the time right. when you played them. And you, I think the lowest point total was maybe 21-22. And you won the first game. You battled. You absolutely battled with one of the top programs in the country. Yeah, we did, and it was it was easy for the team to get up for that match, obviously. And um, we played really well. You know, we fought them hard. The first game was was pretty much all us, and and we we really did a nice job. And um, you know, they responded like you think a top twenty five team at home would, and and took the second set. And the third set, we came out of intermission, and you know, we were up nineteen fifteen, and they really had to steal that third set to. To, uh, to, you know, kind of take control of the match. But honestly, we were one rotation away from being up 2-1, and then who knows what would happen. But it was, it was a night when we were right there with a really nice program and, and showed ourselves really well. Well, you're coming off of College Station, the effort you put forth there, then you open Southland Conference play. And, well, I think the weekend, the Southland Conference weekend, had to be a little bit frustrating. Uh, you won game two handily at New Orleans. But the game one loss at Southeastern Louisiana is a bit of a head scratcher, especially when you come out and you win the first set 29 to 5. Excuse me, 25 to 9. Yeah. Got my little backwards there, but you seem in control. Yeah, we did. And, and honestly, this is, I'm still thinking about it. You know, we understand what happened and, um, you know, we know how it happened, but we, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy about it. But, uh, it's just one of those things that, you know, we played great in the first set. They changed their lineup, got some matchups in there that were really tough for us. And uh, but at the, but the end of it, you know, we still should have won games four and five, and and we lost both of them by two points. And um, I was really disappointed with, you know, we got tight at the end, we didn't handle ourselves well, and and honestly, this was why we put ourselves through such a tough preseason was to handle matches like that on the road, and we just didn't do it. And um, you know, we didn't have Ivy playing; uh, we sat her out last week to kind of rest her legs and get her healthy again, and we were clearly missing her. But you know, no excuses, Southeastern just jumped up and grabbed us at the end and you know we just didn't answer the way we, we usually do so um you know we always talk about moving on after a loss and you have to get ready for the next one and i feel like we did on saturday we played really well but at the same time we want to make sure we understand why it happened so it doesn't happen again it's been a challenging schedule as we said all of those games in a row eight games in 10 days do do the ladies get at least an extra day of Day off this week, I mean, or is well, it really? Yeah, well, or you hope, just yeah. can't, you can't, or you just can't break the routine. Well, we, yeah, they, we, we will, but they've got to earn that time off, and and so we've got to be sharp today, and and hopefully we can get them some time off uh, throughout the week. But uh, the right girls got to get off their feet, and you know we know how we're feeling, so um, you know we're just kind of at that point in the year where nobody's truly hundred percent, but mm-hmm. you know nobody really cares either. You know we got to keep going, and you know now's now's the time to kind of separate ourselves within the conference and get some home wins. We mentioned Brittany Gilpin a moment ago, but you have so many freshmen that are contributing this year. Gilpin, Nicholson, Dowd, Klopetka, uh, you know, all, all of them, plus more, are, are getting the job done. Did you envision them having such an immediate impact when you recruited them? Yeah, a, a few of them for sure. We knew that Brittany and Kristen were going to play a lot um, and be a big part of what we do. And, and Maddie Dowd for sure as well. We knew we were going to be really young in the middle. Um, but those those ball control girls, Kate and Erica and Maddie Wall, those three were kind of a wild card. We weren't sure what we were going to get out of them, but we know how talented they are. And then uh, McGarva is the other one who, and honestly, she's the one that we want to get more playing time for because the other outside hitters are so uh, banged up and they just can't go every single night. And so uh, Kirsty's the one we'd like to see a little bit more out of. But when we've played her, she's done well, um, but we've got to get her doing it at, uh, a little bit higher level against some better competition, but um, you know all seven of those freshmen have had their moments and and will continue to do so. But we're not going anywhere without them, that's for sure. Southern Conference play is underway, and the league is quite interesting after the first week of competition. There's no doubt a lot of teams who appear have elevated their play. Are, are there? There's no gimmies in the league this year, are there? No, there's not. There's it's a lot of parity. 
uh, which makes no surprise because when we go out recruiting, every team recruits the exact same pool of kids. And, you know, the Southland has got a very firm grasp on, on where their talent bases are and, and who they're trying to get. Um, and so all these players know each other. They've played against each other forever, all these Texas girls. And the coaches have seen them for years and years while we've been recruiting each other. So, you know, there's just no surprises. Everybody knows what everybody can do. And uh, there's a lot of those internal rivalries. You know, even if the universities don't have a big rivalry, the players know each other so well that they're they're still there. Mm -hmm. And so um, it makes it very competitive, and, and it opens the door for teams that you don't expect to do some things to rise up and do it. Well, this weekend you face Houston Baptist at home in the Dugan Wellness Center on Saturday. This is actually the start of a three-game homestand uh, for Islander Volleyball, but interestingly enough, the Huskies are coming in 2-0 uh, in the weekend after they defeated Southeastern Louisiana team we just lost to. They beat them 3-0. to zero. Uh, The challenge, t tell me about uh, the Huskies. They're solid. They're, they're well coached. They, um, they keep the ball moving. They're really low air. Uh, frustrating team to play because they just don't beat themselves. So um, they don't have a huge lineup. They're not a bunch of big bangers, but they're really solid. And uh, when you get them the ball in the right place, they know what to do with it. So it's going to be um, a challenge for us. We've got to be patient. We've got to you know, not force things. And, and when it's our time to take advantage of an opportunity, we've got to do it. But um, it'll be an interesting matchup. Well, indeed. Everybody come out and join us. I believe 1 o'clock start. 1 o'clock, yeah. On Saturday here at the Dugan Wellness Center on the campus of Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. Coach, appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot. Tony Greystone joining us here in the locker room once again. When we come back, we'll bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. Stay with us. More to come. Islanders Insider continues. The Southland Conference is 4,200 student athletes from 13 member institutions competing in 17 NCAA Division I sports. We are Southland Strong. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we're going to focus on what's next for Islanders Athletics. Islander women's soccer will head out on the road Friday, October 3rd, as they travel to Lake Charles, Louisiana to take on McNeese State, start time 7 o'clock. They'll also be out on the road to San Antonio on Friday, October 10th, where they take on the University of the Incarnate Word at 7 p.m. And finally, on October 12th, Sunday, Islander soccer returns to Dugan Stadium as they play the Lamar Cardinals that is slated for a 1 o'clock start time. Islander volleyball will be back at the Dugan Wellness Center on Saturday, October 4th, as they host Houston Baptist. That is a 1 o'clock start time. Then, Thursday the 9th, Islander volleyball will also be at home as part of this three-game homestand as they take on Stephen F. Austin, that again, 7 o'clock start time. And finally, on October 11th, they'll end the three-game homestand as they host Northwestern State at 1 o'clock. Islanders golf will head out on the road on October 6th as they travel to Sam Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas for the Harold Funston Invitational. Rounds 1 and 2 will be played on Monday the 6th, followed by Round 3 on Tuesday the 7th. And Islander Cross Country will head on the road to San Antonio to the Incarnate Work Invitational on Saturday, October 11th. That meet begins at 8 a.m. I want to thank Shanna Caldwell of Islanders Women's Soccer for joining us today, as well as Head Coach Tony Greystone of Islanders Volleyball for joining us as well. And most importantly, we want to thank you for tuning in. I'm Stephen King. You've been watching Islanders Insider.